Welcome back, I'm Kevin Locken with Mitchell Acoustical and today we're running a 650 drywall grid ceiling. With that comes a little bit of layout. Um, we have to make sure that we lay out specifically for the lights. Uh, typically, uh, architects don't give you points of reference to work from in drywall grid. Um, so what we have to do is we have to make kind of our own assessment on where we should run our mains and our T's from to avoid lights and HVAC. I'll go into a little bit of that. Um, we don't have our HVAC set up to where we want it yet, but we do have our light layout and I'll show you guys how to avoid that when, our, when we go ahead and frame the ceiling. Now guys, when we're running drywall grid and what the difference is between drywall and regular ceiling grid is that there's a little bit of forethought that goes into it. Um, sometimes the architects put in notes for where they want you to pull certain mains and tees from, but in drywall grid, it's a little bit different. Um, you have the ability to uh, frame things different ways um, and work around. Um, so in certain instances, you know, we'll figure out where we want to put our mains Typically, we'll go center, center, which means we'll then split the room, run our mains every two foot from there. I'll show you guys when we go ahead and run it so you, you guys will get a quick understanding, but this is just an overview. Then we'll go into where, our, where do our lights lay out. That's one of the critical points as well as HVAC. The HVAC can come back later, um, but a lot of time the lights are either pendulum or they're centered in a room for a certain way. In this instance, we're in a conference room. This is a, a, probably a smaller table, but they've got a big window back here. But in this instance, they are centered. So they're gonna want it centered right over a table, I'm guessing. Um, and so we have to make sure that we miss those with our tees or our mains. In this instance, in this ceiling, it's going to be our tees that we're gonna wanna miss. Um, so we'll go ahead and do a little bit of forethought and a little bit of planning in this, and then we'll go ahead and run it just to show you guys what I'm talking about. We're gonna start by centering this room. Um, and what that means is find the center. And in grid terms, we're then gonna go two foot, two foot. Uh, so that we have our mains running the longest distance in this instance. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we know, okay, so here's gonna be my main and here's gonna be my next main. So I'm gonna have, this room is I think 12 foot six, so I'll have some cutoffs to use. I'll, I'll end up using uh, three mains in this instance, um, but we'll go ahead and run these this way. But the next thing we'll show you is if I come back here, here is the center of my can, okay? So what I have to do is give enough room, so I'm about 40, let's call it 42 and a half inches. Um, so I'm gonna want about six inches this way, uh, 42, okay. I'm gonna come about a foot this way. This is kind of a no-go zone for any of my tees, right? So I have, a can that's gonna go right here, centered. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll miss the main this way, but as long as I stay out of this area, so I should cut my T-line probably 36 inches back, and I'll show you guys once I get up in the ceiling, 36 inches, and then as long as I put a T there, my next will be, if I frame it at 16 or 24, will be either here, or here, depending on where I put that T, I'll definitely miss where this can is, and that's one of the most important aspects uh, when you're framing drywall grid. So this is our 650 grid. Uh, it's about an inch and a half wide flange each way, just like a seal stud. Um, so it's kind of your typical framing. Think of this as you're framing a ceiling is basically what it is, but it's easier because it's, it's grid um, once you get the hang of it. Um, back in the day, they used to use black iron and like, gosh, 12 gauge wire to hang this kind of stuff. So if you go to any old buildings or anything else like that that are commercial buildings, you'll see it, uh, especially in downtown Chicago, um, just how they had to frame those ceilings with clips and black iron and everything else like that. But um, back, to, back to this. Um, so this is what we use uh, to actually hang and create a lip so that we can, just like wall angle uh, in, in a regular grid system, but this is just utility angle. Um, we use it for creating corners um, or lips of soffits, stuff like that. So uh, it's really, um, it's a really great, uh, piece for us to, to use all across the board. To level this ceiling, I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, I always use my laser card, and then we've got our laser here, and I always drop it at about two inches. I'll make sure that two inches is right here on my laser card. I'll go ahead and pull this off. 
and now we're ready to get started. As I was talking about, I need to be at a 36 inch slot line uh, to miss my can. And the reason I know that is because my can is already pre-laid out. So I have marks on the floor for where my mains are gonna run, and I'm gonna go ahead and set those mains up, and then I can come back and fill in tees wherever I need to. So I'll go ahead and I'll mark where my 27 is. That'll be the center of my main. The next thing is, is that we've got these slot lines here where the tees are gonna go. And again, this is just, now this becomes kind of a regular grid ceiling. So I can either take it from here, here, just kind of wherever 36 lays out. Okay. And if you guys can see, I've got, this is called, now that we've got a little bit of our uh, commercial application over with, this just becomes a regular grid system. Um, as you can see, I've got my slot lines. The only thing that I have to do, aside from rivet, is I'm going to screw with mini screws. Um, so if you'll see, if I pull here, here's my 36. I don't want to break it on this fire lance. Uh, I think that these are put in for um, uh, firefighters, I think, uh, if anybody has any uh, extra details on that. Let me know in the comments, but I but I think it's for firemen to pull the ceiling down if, if I'm not mistaken um, So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skip another six inches because I don't want to be on that fire lance uh, Because again, this is a drywall system. I'll go ahead. I'll cut it at 36 That's gonna be my first main, and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my next main the same way. Drywall ceilings are a lot easier to patch because um, they're a lot more heavy duty uh, than just a regular grid ceiling. Uh, a lot of times the grid ceilings don't line up, but in a drywall ceiling, you've got your finisher um, plus your, your structural components that, that can latch together. Now, Time to start hanging the grid, okay? I'm gonna take my laser that we already know is set at two inches. Go ahead and cut it. Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and let that hang for a little bit until I can get this square. I've got my mark from my mark down on the floor. I'll go ahead and clamp it. We'll get up the next one. Right here, somewhere about four foot. Go ahead. back and we'll clamp this one at four foot. I'll go ahead and pull it. And the reason why I don't tie those off yet is when I move this, you know, to where I believe that it's square, it becomes on the line. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm, I'm, dead, I'm dead nuts on the line. But then once it moves out of square, I'm about a quarter inch off. So I can always, I can always adjust this. That's why I don't tie it off. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna pull four foot. I'm gonna clamp this. Go ahead. And now for right now, we can go ahead and start stuffing tees. We're at the point where layout is critical. Um, as we've made mention before, we've got two can lights that are centered where they need to be. That's why I went ahead and made the marks at 36 inches to cut off my, my, uh, my main here so that my slot line would end up at 36. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure where 36 is. 
okay? And now I can go ahead and start stuffing teas every 24 inches, and I know that I'm gonna miss those cans. Six and a quarter. I'm gonna take a T. We're going to square this up a little bit. One of the most important things, especially in drywall grid, um, is to go ahead and square it. Um, basically, you wanna take the two points of your rectangle and they should match as far as numbers. So I have got 51 and five. And I've got 51 and a quarter. So I'm gonna wanna shoot this forward just a bit. And then once I've got this square, I can go ahead and screw these off and start stuffing tees. Okay, we've got it square, 51, 3 eighths. With drywall grid, you're gonna wanna go ahead and screw every single tee that's on the perimeter as well. Um, I know that in my previous grid video, uh, you pop a rivet into every other T. Uh, that's not like this in drywall. Every single T that's in the ceiling needs to be screwed off along the perimeter. In here, in the field, it, you don't need to. When I'm stuffing T's, I like to take the uh, stab end and put it all the way to the edge of my utility angle. I'll bring it to the middle of my main. And I'll go ahead, hold my thumb there, go ahead and Cut it. Okay, so now take my four foot tee, which is my straight edge, and I'll go ahead and line it up with the other straight edge that I know that this grid is already square. Go ahead, match them. Take this. Okay. Oh, did that move? No, that's good. That's good, perfect. Okay. The next thing I can do is I can go ahead, I'm done with this section, I've gotta put in this T, but I can go ahead and I can lift this grid. It's a little bit low. I'm gonna go ahead and Again, this is always every four foot that you wanna put these wires. So it looks like I have another wire to put up after this video. And now I can go ahead and get that tied off. Okay? So that's gonna be it for this portion. We'll go ahead and we'll connect the rest of these and then we'll finish off this portion of the framing. I'm gonna fit this last T. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna miss our can. Our can is actually right here, which is on layout with our two foot coming this way. Sometimes you may need to you know, throw it in every 16 inches, but we're lucky enough on this layout that we can put it in every 24 inches like we want to, uh, or else you start wasting more material than you had figured. Um, the next thing is, and the last part of the ceiling is, putting in the mains. Uh, so what I had already cut, you know, we've got a three foot main, so I have to use a full one anyways. Uh, what I usually do, again, same thing with going along the wall, I'll take it and I'll stab it. I'll go ahead and make a mark with my thumb, come back, cut it. Sometimes this takes some trial and error, um, but, if, if you cut one or two of them, you'll figure out like, oh, okay, this will be, this will hang on a quarter inch or this will hang on um, maybe even, you know, a half inch. Um, so we'll see where this, where this hangs. They're all, all of these stab types are a little bit different. Um, they have different lengths. Okay, so you heard it click. Yeah, so with, with me going ahead and stabbing it in, um, and then bringing it to my end point here. I have about a half inch gap here in the back, which is perfectly fine. Now we know that we're 27 inches center over there. We're gonna pull and measure 27 in this corner. Okay, 
center ourselves right here. Go ahead and clamp it and we'll screw it. Pull four foot over here. It's over just a hair. Clamp it, screw it. We'll go ahead and throw some T's in and call it a day on this ceiling. As you guys can see, I have a little bit of a bow in this ceiling. Um, the guys will have to come back and get one more wire to pull, to actually pull this up to where it should be. You always wanna have more wires um, than less, especially on drywall grid, because over time, these, if you don't pull these tight, these will start to give a little bit of slack and that ceiling will sag. Um, so that's why, especially on drywall grid, way more wires than necessary need to be in this ceiling than not. This whole video came about uh, by somebody asking uh, about something similar to this and you know how, how to frame uh, a, a grid ceiling and I just thought that this would be a great video for that. Um, don't forget at the end when you're tying in your, your mains, um, I, I just want to make sure that you're pulling the same number that you pulled in the beginning as far as where you're going to center your main on and that's what you're going to tie into on the end. Um, I, I forgot kind of forgot to put that at the end, um, but it should be self-explanatory. If you're pulling one number at the beginning where you're starting your main, that's where your other main should end up pulling as well. Uh, and you may see that it's out of square. You'll just have to kind of use your line of sight to, to straighten it. Um, but for the most part, if you're, if you're in a, you know, a commercial setting or something like this, or, or, or even a basement, uh, your walls should be pretty square. With that said, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let us know if you guys have any questions. Like I said, this video came about by somebody having a question, and we just thought, hey, we should show you know how we how we would use this application um, in the field. Um, and so this is our 650 grid uh, system, and this is what we use uh, to create drywall lids. Thank you, and have a good one. Take care.